How you doing folks? Welcome back to Tappan Off Farm. Gorgeous day in rural Aberdeenshire, northeast Scotland. I've just been up checking on the sheep in our area of nut tree silver pasture that we have above the market garden. A few vlogs back I was moving the sheep to graze this area. They grazed the grass between the top two rows of trees um, and then we had a period of quite bad weather and there's not much tree cover here for them. Even though they're a hardy breed of sheep, we still like to be able to give them the option to be able to go and shelter under the trees. So they went back to the north field where there's plenty of tree cover. And now that we've got a little window of good weather, we brought them down yesterday to carry on grazing this area, the last two grazing strips in this design. So they seem perfectly happy. We've also been moving the goats through the small silver pasture system that we've got behind the goat shed. Again, because of the bad weather, it's given, it's taken them longer to move through that system. Um, so they've got maybe another day in there now. So we've finished our veg box for another season, um, just shy of 20 weeks, tough season. And we just realized that we were coming to the last amount of food that we feel we could share out to our members. Still finished on a really great box. We can rest up a little bit, but of course we've got a lot of work in preparing the garden and the polytunnel in readiness for winter and then of course for next season. So we're going to be going into the polytunnel, we're going to be pulling out some old crops, we're going to be harvesting some squash that we've got left, taking that into the house for ourselves, pulling out the old plants, taking them to the compost, a bit of general tidy up in the tunnel, often gets a bit messy towards the end of the year. But first of all, really exciting, we're going to go and take a look at our bakashi. About seven weeks ago we made a couple of vlogs focusing on making this fermented organic material. Very different from compost because it's an anaerobic situation that we're actively trying to create by using effective microorganisms to inoculate this large pile of goat manure and straw that we pulled out of the goat shed. Um, tarping that, leaving it alone and uh, well, we'll let the results speak for themselves.
This is incredible. We really didn't expect to see it looking like this. I don't know why we didn't. It seems unbelievable, is the thing. This is, this is incredible folks. So this is just over seven weeks of um, fermentation and maturation of this Bokashi heap. And we're looking at what looks like a lovely pile of compost. This has now come to a stage that as market gardeners and, and growers of food, we can use this as a mulch compost, as a, as a no dig mulch. It really didn't look anything like this. Brilliant soil amendment. Um, we're really, yeah, lucky to have so much of this. Um, right now. We can use this on all our beds for next year. Yeah. It's a lot. Um, oh, this is incredible. There's there's little mushrooms growing in it. Yeah, the, the size has gone down. It's reduced a little bit as a pile from the sort of cubic 16 cubic meters or so that we had. I would say it has reduced a little bit. We had some very high temperatures at the start. When we first measured it, we were up over 70 degrees centigrade, which was a bit too hot. When we had those high temperatures of 70 degrees centigrade, we applied a lot of water. We tried to compact the heap a bit more. With all the light matter, all the straw, there was a lot of oxygen. So we compressed it even more. We dampened it down with water. Yeah. And that did bring the temperature down when we did a reading again in a, and the next day, it was down to 60 and then that continued to decrease yeah. to a cooler temperature. This looks like there's been a little, little uh, small mammal. Looks something. like a vole has yeah. been in here, yeah. <laughs> so seven weeks, no turning. No nothing. No nothing. <laughs> yeah. Obviously we had to buy in the effective microorganisms. This is something we want to look into not having to do. We're gonna look into the cultivation of our own indigenous microorganisms. Of course, the thing that we're really excited with this, the bakashi, the fermented organic matter, is that it might mean that we really can guarantee that we don't have any weed seeds that will germinate when we add them to our garden beds. And that's been a big problem for us. We really wanna generate as much of our own materials on this farm as possible. So we always make compost and we often have a lot of bedding from the goat buyer, but you know, when we make that, uh, we very re well. We've we've never made it without any weeds in it, and it often it brings a brilliant amount of uh, nutrients to our beds, but also with that a lot of weeds. So for us, especially wanting to um, progress with the no dig transition that we've been doing in the garden, to have something that's you know incredibly uh, nutrient dense um, and yes, relatively easy to make as well with the zero turning, but something that doesn't just cover our beds in weeds when we add uh, add it to them. So yeah, this this theoretically won't have any weeds germinating in it because of the process of fermenting it. We have done a tiny little tester with a, a pile that we did um, last, year. last year, yeah, um, a tiny little pile and put that around some of the plants we have in our polytunnel a couple of weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago now. No weeds have germinated in that. So that's really promising. Watch the space as usual, but, um, but we're really hoping that that will be one of the prime things that will mean that this is something we will do year after year. <laughs> oh, that is so great. This we're is very so, excited. Yeah, really excited. <laughs> we just didn't know whether all the hard work involved in piling all of this up. We had great help from our volunteers, Becky and Finn. So I hope they're really excited to see the, yeah. what has happened here. Yeah. Um, Really great. I think this is going to be fantastic to add to the market garden because yeah. we've obviously had quite low fertility this year in the garden with an application yeah. of a woody compost, which yeah. hadn't really broken down, hadn't composted long enough. I think there's like high hopes as well for, you know, I mean, with this kind of no dig movement going into the larger scale market gardens, there is a lot of kind of uh, need often to buy in large mm -hmm. amounts of organic matter because to produce that amount of weed seed free kind of uh, compost is quite difficult. The, the, the main difference with this is that, you know, the texture of it is pretty different to that kind of municipal yeah. compost that you buy in. We'll keep experimenting with this and mm -hmm. see what we find. But yeah, if there's ways of kind of making your own large amount of, you know, um, good organic matter on site for market gardens, I think that's really promising. Uh, it could be really, um, yeah, it could be really exciting. Mm progress for the kind of no dig movement Definitely. in that way yeah yeah you're right we, we need to see how this fair is putting it on the beds but the great thing is is that yeah we've got a, a large volume of material ready to go
So I'm just preparing the buyer for the goats when they come in later at the end of the day. Um, and one of the things we do at this time of year, especially kind of in autumn, um, is that we bring them uh, basically fresh cut tree from around the farm. And we've obviously made tree hay in the summer. This is basically just extra feed for them at this time of year. There's less grazing outside um, and there's always inevitably more pruning we could do for the different systems we have around the farm, kind of coppice and things like this. So this up here, Jane's got uh, from a uh, willow coppice above the market garden, which is actually a fuel wood coppice. It's not something we decided to cut for tree hay because that would be at the wrong time of year. Um, so we're cutting it now. It won't be as full of nutrition as it would during the summer, um, but it's still something that they really enjoy and it will still have plenty in it. So I'm just gonna put that in the buyer now and show you how we uh, basically put it in here for them to eat. It's uh, the, the Chinese willow, a hybrid willow. Um, they're not all this tall, um, but actually the goats do a really good job at, and it's kind of entertaining for them, at uh, kind of standing up on these pallets that we use to hold the, the tree hay, and they'll just find their ways of pulling down the branches as they usually do when they find a tree outside. So it's actually fine. But you can just break these to make them kind of be able to reach them like that as well. here um, yeah then we've got quite a large pile of brash out the front here but it's really the result of yeah daily feeding um, of basically tree fodder um, that we give the goats yeah every day um, from around the farm um, throughout the year actually so this pile's getting pretty big now as you can see as tall as the the pallet palace um, so really we've got this earmarked we want to extend our dead hedge down here um, so this is really what we use the brush for. It's how we've made all of our dead hedges really um, through kind of processing, you know, cutting tree back for various different reasons, giving it to the goats and then taking that brush that's left over and uh, yeah, building a hedge out of it. So yeah, it's a really nice process actually, but yeah, there is always <laughs> this moment where we've got a very messy big pile in front of the buyer that gets a little bit too large to handle. Um, but it shows how much stuff from the farm they get to eat, which is brilliant for their diet. Clearing out the last of our squash and cutting back the plants to put in the compost um, and just discovering some of the ones that have been hidden away uh, while, while these guys have been crawling all over the polytunnel. Uh, we've been harvesting these for the veg box 
um, mostly a variety that's planted generally down there but has trailed up here uh, which I think is, might be called Orange Summer that's the one that I least remember the name of oh and Amoro as well um, but the ones further up here are um, we've got Blue Hungarian um, which is actually not one that we're picking right now we did pick quite a big one probably our biggest squash and then we've got butternut squash which actually just from some saved seed from a butternut squash then we've got green Hokkaido as well um, so that's further down there we'll be discovering some of them as we move down the row just clearing the leaves back and then we keep finding these guys these are the ones that we just get let get a little bit bigger um, this one actually looks like <laughs> One of the Amoro, so it's one of the Amoro. Lovely. We were actually picking some of these kind of younger and fresher than this, um, and really just eating them with the skin and everything, and that was really nice. You know, similar a bit to a courgette, but with a squashy taste. These ones are ones that we're going to be just trying to store uh, over the winter, so yeah, we're happy for it to have a quite nice thick skin, and then we're going to kind of cure them inside. Um, and store them somewhere kind of dark and um, quite dry but cool. And then I've actually got one of the blue Hungarian behind me here. Come on, pass me that. Yep. <laughs> Not very blue, but anyway, um, the one inside we've got has gone a little bit blue, so maybe this will go blue as it kind of sits for a while. We weren't actually planning on filling half of the polytunnel with squash, but as it went this year with our courgettes not germinating and some of the other uh, crops not germinating um, we yeah just decided that we may as well fill these beds with something um, and so the squash were moved from outdoors to indoors and I think we've actually got a lot better crop because of it. These guys I'm really happy with, um, it, it really was just, we, we bought a few organic butternut squash and decided why not just sow the seeds uh, from inside them and I didn't really expect them to grow that well, I don't know why, um, but I guess because they weren't, we, we've been choosing varieties that are good with maybe a shorter season and things like this um, and I wasn't actually really sure how well they were going to grow, um, so yeah, so we have got some, so I'll be excited to try these guys. Right, I just brought that trailer load of squash and uh, old courgette and aubergine plants out to the chickens. Chickens are in the straw yard at the moment, this area where we keep them on and off throughout the year but mostly at winter where they can scratch through our compost heaps, adding their manure and uh, generally just scavenging through the waste that the farm makes. Uh, turning it into eggs. Plenty of material for the compost, in fact, really too much. Um, so we don't want to add too much nitrogen. Very green plants, obviously a very high nitrogen component. 
So unfortunately we don't have a huge amount of wood chip at the moment. Normally I'd be layering in some wood chip right now in with these greens. So instead of piling it all on the heap, I've chucked some into the chicken run itself just to entertain the hens and break down in situ because we quite often come in and actually just harvest the floor of this run um, for mulch and compost. So that'll keep them happy for a wee while and go and get some more. Almost done now. Right, that's pretty much it, I'd say. Pulled out all the squash, pumpkin plants, courgette, cucumber, uh, some aubergine, taking a couple of loads to the chickens. This will be the third load. We got ourselves a nice little haul, nice little basket of mixed squash, summer squash, winter squash, courgette. It's going to be plenty for the house. We've done our best to leave the majority of the plant's roots behind in the soil to keep on doing a bit of work with regards to biological action. We'll cover up the beds with a tarp and any of this residue will just break down in situ. We don't need to do anything to these beds until early next year. If we wanted to, I suppose we could bring in our compost or the bakashi and top up the no dig beds in here but I think we'll wait until spring to do that. Just saw that we had a box of garlic delivered by the postman so that will be tomorrow's job getting one of the beds cleared in the market garden and get our garlic planted for next year. Alright folks I think that's another end to another day here at Tappanoff Farm. Hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today. If you're new to the vlog please do hit subscribe. It's a great support to us, lets us know that you're enjoying the videos and you want to see more. Give the video a like, share the video with your friends and your social media. And until next time, I hope you can get out there and get cultivating your own good life. And we'll see you next time. See ya.